Who taught you how to hire people? What were you talking about? He said, who taught you how to hire people? I said, he said, nobody. He said, exactly. This is one of the most important things you can do in business and you're just winging it based on what you think is going to happen. He said, there's a, there's a strategic, systematic way of hiring people into your company and you're just hiring people to fill a need. Who taught you how to hire? I said, nobody, Cameron. <laughs> nobody said, well, there you go. Imagine open up a bakery and nobody taught you how to cook. You didn't learn how to cook. Like you, my thing is to do the business. It's not even like I've been hiring people for a long time. I just hire, right? So you don't open a business because you've just like no one taught you how to run a business and you're just like doing your own thing just to make a sale and make money. That's not running a business. So you open this big business, 10,000 square feet business and nobody taught you how to run it. Bound for failure, bound to crash. Because you don't know what you're doing. So, um, the, the, uh, yeah, that, that was, that was a, a life-changing situation for me. And then I got on the phone with Donnie, and I'm like, all right, Donnie, <laughs> there's mad stuff I don't know how to do when it comes to running a business, and I need to learn these things. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast, where we have dope conversations with people who have social proof in front of a live studio audience. You guys, my name is Donnie Wiggins, and I am your favorite business coach. And a liar. And a liar. You just lied. <laughs> so it's so interesting because we just talked about it on a call where there's something that I'm working on where I want to do what I say I'm going to do. I want to be the person I say I'm going to be. And it starts with, these small little habits <clears throat> of making commitments. Mm -hmm. So I'm being careful not to tell people, hey, I'm going to call you right back if I know I'm not going to call you right back. Do you do that often? I do. So would you call yourself a liar? Absolutely. You know, I'm working on it. It's interesting because Kenny calls me a liar, mm. right? And I'm like, he called me a liar. And I'm like, what? I don't tell lies. Like I'm like, I'm the most transparent person, you know, I don't really care what you think about what I'm going mm -hmm. to say. And he's like, no, you got like these little white lies. Like, you know, I'm about to eat when really you're not really about to eat. You're just trying to get off the phone or I'm going to call you right back <laughs> or I'll be there in five minutes right. or I'm winding down for bed and you're really laying on the sofa. And I didn't think about it. But those are lies. So I did really just tell somebody. Uh, someone called and um, she called. We're, we're about to start the podcast. And I'm like, hey, sis, I'll call you right back. And I am going to call back. Well, I asked. So, so then you lied again. But I'm not going to call asked, right back. Because I, I asked. I said, Yo, are you going to call that person back? You said no. No, you said, are you going to call right back? Right. Yeah. And I said, no. Yeah. But I can't because. Yeah. We're podcasting. Yeah. And then after the podcast, we have a meeting. Yep. And this is how I fall into the trap of never returning your call. Exactly. Because I shouldn't have answered would have been better. Right. Because I would have seen the missed call notification. So when I don't answer your call or respond to your text, it's really me trying to operate in a, in a good space so that I can actually call you back. So like me not calling you back, me not responding to your text for days. That's just my way of making sure that I do get back to you at some point. For sure. It, you know, in my journey of entrepreneurship, my um, most of the, the progression came not from learning a new skill externally or making more sales. It's like something that changed inside of me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So even these little, I'm going to call you right back. I want to be somebody that does what I say I'm going to do because those habits transfer. Yeah. I say I'm going to clean my room and I don't. And nobody really cares because yeah. nobody's there. It's just me and my room. Or I say I'm going to like create some content. Or I say I'm going to go Instagram live. I say I'm going to make all these calls. And if nobody's there, it becomes a habit of us being able to say something to ourselves and not doing it, meaning mm -hmm. our words don't even really carry any weight. Well, that's like what we talked about in a recent episode with, we are so used to disappointing ourselves, like not keeping our word to ourselves that it doesn't even phase us anymore. So when I literally just said, Hey, I'll call you right back. I felt nothing. Yeah, I felt nothing. If I said, yep, I'm going to check your email right now. For me, that means before I go to bed tonight, 
I'm going to check your email. <laughs> and 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 sometimes what will happen is um I am so like and this is a thing that I have to work on, like getting control of my brain, so to speak, because I might say I might really have intentions right now to check your email, but then Dave is going to text me and I'm looking at the text like, man, I got to check this email. Oh, I'll do both. And then I take his call. And while we're calling, while we're talking, I close my laptop and then it's tomorrow. And I'm like, I never checked yeah. the email. Yeah. I think it's just important. We just give our, this is actually why I never say I'm going to the gym because I know I'm not. Well, then that but. would be a bold face lie. Right, like I don't tell bold when I face say I'm lies. Go. If I say I'm gonna go, then I go. But my 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 point is saying I'm trying to give my words more weight, meaning, yes, more, mm -hmm. meaning. more validity for sure. Like what I say, because right now you can't say my word is bond. Yeah, it's not. Here's my question for you though, mm -hmm. because you are a master manifester. Mm -hmm. If I say, and I think two things can happen. If I say I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to go to the gym. This week, I'm going to the gym. I'm going to mm -hmm. go to the gym. The more you say it, the close. are you closer to actually doing it? Or are you closer to having no weight to your words? Because now you could just say it and it just becomes routine. It's not. Yeah. Boring. So I think know. that you still don't <laughs> understand manifestation. Saying it is not enough to realize it. Got you. Like it's your thoughts become these things. So you actually have to be intent upon the thought that I really am going to the gym. And then you're saying it like there's a, it's a connection between I'm going to go to the gym and man, I'm sitting here, I got to get to this gym. I'm really going to, I really want to be healthy. I'm going to the gym. There's two totally that, that you might actually end up at the gym. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, maybe I'm using the wrong word manifestation. What if affirmations? Mm-hmm. Same can thing. You, can you affirm enough and then you, then you actually, the more you say it, the more you want to do it? Or do you keep saying it and then it just yeah. doesn't mean anything? So with my affirmations, I am very careful to speak them in current or past tense, right? Because if you say things like, um, I want to make six figures, if your goal is, if one of your affirmations is I want to make six figures and you're saying that every single day, like you really want to make this six figures, I believe that you're constantly speaking it as if it's something that's to come in the future. I want to make six figures. I want to make six figures. So if I had a six figure goal, I would say something more like I am so happy and grateful now that I make six figures. I am so happy and grateful now that I've identified the opportunity that can yield six figures. Like I like to say it like that because when you're saying it and when you really get into the headspace of feeling it and believing it, you got to be super intentional. You can literally feel the six figures happening. And then what ends up happening is the ideas start to connect and to align for you to actually go out there and make six figures. But if it says, I will lose weight, I will be a better person, then you're constantly speaking in future tense. And so... People don't believe in speaking things into the universe, but or or the you know, God created the universe. You put things out into the universe as you want to receive it. The universe doesn't know past, future, or present tense, right? That's your word. That the difference is your word has to kind of trick your mind into believing what's happening right now. So I will make more money, I will lose more weight every single day you say it. That energy, the universe operates off of energy. We're all a frequency. Your frequency is aligned with something that's going to happen in the future versus what you want to happen right now. That was deep. Not all good. Not really. <clears throat> I mean, I, it's I guess. a fact. Okay, mm -hmm. it is a fact. When you you know, and many people don't connect it to manifesting it, but you know when you are intentional about doing something. Like the moment we said. Whenever that was at this point that we said make six, seven figures, it was different. Yeah. That day that we declared it, this this is the year. This year we're doing seven figures, yeah. right? That moment that we declared it, we immediately took action. There was a different feeling inside like, I can feel this. This is actually real. This is actually something that I truly desire. And we made phone calls and we we reverse engineered our business model to figure out what we have to do. We cut off offers. If I do this, this, and this, we actually put the action with the thought, but this because we felt like it's really possible on the inside. Whereas right now, if you say, I'm going to make a billion dollars this year, 
it's nice to say, but mm. do you really have the feeling that you're really going to make a billion dollars this year? Mm. And so you don't go as hard on the action required and setting yourself up on the pathway to actually achieve a billion dollars this year. Yeah, And we kept the conversation going past that conversation. For that sure. Conversation. The whole year. Yeah, 100%. The like, whole year. We were doing check-ins. Yep. We're doing accountability calls. Where are you at? What do you need? How can I help you? Um, we were super intentional because we had the thought first. Yep. We confessed it to eat to ourselves, then to each other, and then to a whole the, the world. Yeah, yep. publicly. And then and then you gotta make it happen. And those are the missing points. Sometimes people want to hold on to their desires so much. But if you're the only person who knows and the only person holding yourself accountable, sometimes you're like your accountability isn't strong enough. Like you don't care about disappointing yourself. Yeah. You don't care about letting you down. You got to have somebody else in this equation. If you are not self-motivated enough to get it done, you got to put that thing out there. And we couldn't come back. We put it out here on the podcast, on the Social Proof podcast. Yeah. So now we're putting out this idea that we're going to accomplish something. We are basically saying we are going to present to you the proof that this happened. We can't just say at six figure energy when we put this out on the podcast that's created around the proof for sure for we sure. had to make it happen that's a fact and a lot of it was environment too just being around yes more people who are actually accomplishing the thing that we wanted to accomplish mm -hmm. and we have more conversation it's not even like tutorial like yo you should do this to get what i have it's like yeah. just being in the conversation is more yeah. inspiring well that brings me to your question that you had like how do you get in the rooms or when should you start getting in the rooms? Like, what's the first step? We were talking about masterminds and he asked, like, is there a step before going all out into the masterminds? And as I'm thinking about this, we were masterminding together before we were investing. 100%. So early in the year that we decided that we were going to make seven figures, this was 2021 <clears throat> early in that year. Um, David, myself, Marcus Rosier, Marcus Rosier, I always call him Rosier because it's how it's spelled, and Marketing by Monray. We literally, I don't even know how it came about, we literally said we are going to get together and mastermind, right? And I remember we had this place we went to, a mm -hmm. restaurant, we got together, we had it, Monray had it catered, I believe, mm -hmm. and we got together, we had a meeting, strong meeting. That's a mastermind. That's the same thing that we do to go into these rooms. You're going into these rooms to learn new ideas, get new information. That's what we did. Well, we were supposed to do this on a monthly basis, fell off immediately, right? Mm -hmm. We never, the four of us, I don't think, ever met again. But me and Monray continued to mastermind, right? Me and Monray continuing to hold each other accountable. Then me and David are over here holding each other accountable. Then we kind of end up in the same room. Then me, David, and Monray. We never stopped masterminding. At that point, we couldn't have invested $50,000 in a mastermind. We couldn't have invested $150,000 in a mastermind. So how can we use people who are around us that complement what it is that we're trying to do that can bring something to the table? Like, how can I think out loud? Like, we're overthinking this mastermind. How can I think out loud with people who can add value to me? Yeah, I would say probably that first step to getting into a mastermind is accomplishing something. I mean, it, the, the only reason that we, I don't want to say the only reason, but a major reason that we connected in the first place is because I've accomplished something at the time I met Donnie. Donnie was accomplishing stuff at the time she met me and we got together and said, oh, well, it's not, it's not a big discrepancy. It's not like I'm super successful and you're uh, an Uber driver trying to make ends meet. Not not saying that we wouldn't collaborate, but if that was the case where she was she was making six figures and I was making, let's say at that point I was, I don't know, I was making, I was still a server at the Cheesecake Factory. I don't believe she would she would have taken as much interest in creating a relationship with me at that time. And I don't I don't want it to sound like, oh well, I can't be cool with the cashier that works at Kroger. But we don't have a whole lot in common. We don't have a whole lot to talk about. Once we linked up, we started talking about success and the things that's working for me. What's the things that's working mm -hmm. for you? The mindset, like connecting with people. And the people that you are around 
are probably typically 90 something percent are going to be made up of people that are probably on the same level as you in whatever level we're talking about. So the people that you hang out with most are probably on the same financial level, same, let's say, spiritual level, same uh, uh, intellectual level, right? Tenth graders don't hang out with fourth graders. Not that anything's wrong with a fourth grader, but we don't have a whole lot in common. So what happens is me, Donnie, Monray, Marcus, we're all in the space where individually we don't need each other to do what we're doing, but collectively we can all go to the next level, but we have a whole lot to talk about in this conversation. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So the more you accomplish, the more tables you'll be invited to. Maybe not a million dollar table when you're making 60,000 as an entrepreneur, but there's a 60,000, there's a under a hundred thousand dollar table. For entrepreneurs in a city that's getting together and they're individually getting together at the six-figure table. There's a bunch of six-figure entrepreneurs that get together, but individually, one of them found this seven-figure table that they're sitting at and they come bring the game back to their six-figure group. And it just, we all rise together. So first thing, accomplish something, yeah. build something. Absolutely. Um, also be willing to add value, mm-hmm. right? Um Dave said, if I were making six figures and he were still the waiter at the Cheesecake Factory, I wouldn't be interested in connecting, probably not on a level where I want to mastermind with you in a way to get myself to the next level. That would probably have ended up being a mentor-mentee kind of relationship, right? But Dave could have said, yo, I have this t-shirt company. It's already doing seventy. dollars $80,000 a year. I'm still working my job because I'm taking, you know, I'm responsible for this, 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 and this. I know that I haven't made six figures yet, but I promise you I can add value here. You you were mentioning that you wanted to start a t-shirt company. I've done that. We're already doing that consistently. I can help you if we can mastermind together. Right. So also that would still be a mentor mentee type of relationship. Yeah, but you get a seat at the table when you're able to add value. For sure. Yeah, you get a For seat sure. at the table when you're able to add value. Yeah. And that's something that's really important. If I'm going to be honest, like there's only two ways to mastermind for free or for a fee. That's it. I can't think I can't think of any other way, either for free or for a fee. And If it is for free, you are likely going to be like David was talking about masterminding with people that you have immediate access to. You meet along the way, y'all vibe for whatever reason. For a fee, you want to be in a circle that's guaranteed to have people who are operating at a higher level than you. I would not invest in a mastermind um, that is meant to take me to a higher level just with people who are on my level or beneath right? Somebody in the room has to be at a higher level. Somebody in the room has to have clear value that I can see myself, you know, benefiting from. But there are also masterminds. Um, David and I were on the same level, but we put ourselves around both together and individually people who were just operating at such a high level. And then he's able to go out and say, Hey, I did this. Here's what I learned. I'm able to bring it back. Just like what he said, there are masterminds though, that are sufficient to be a part of. And you got to start where you start where everybody's on the same level. Y'all just getting together. Now we might be on the same level today, but something I know about marketing and something, you know, about fulfillment may be that missing piece to take us both or one of us to the next level. 100%. But not even just the information. It still comes back to, I believe, you got to have something going. Because yeah. you can get to it. Like my one of my first, one of my first mentors was uh, Tony Abrams. At this time, he was, uh, he was retired, young and retired. Um, but then he started working for Diddy, just high level um, kind of CFO stuff. And at this point, I'm working at the Cheesecake Factory but I'm selling t-shirts. His nephew, my best friend, Brandon, my other best friend, because Donnie's my best friend. Because I'm ready to throw hands already. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling his uncle about me. Yo, my best friend got the t-shirt brand. He's really out there grinding, right? So he told his uncle about it, and we just sat down and had conversations, and he's just brilliant when it comes to business. And he took a liking to me because, one, I had something going, and two, I was willing to listen. 
I kind of what what I found out is successful people want to be a part of someone's future success that it looks like they're going to make it. People want to be a part of that. I want to be. I want to say I mentored you. Yeah. Right? I want to be able to say as as Brittany continues to grow. I want to say, yo, she used to come all the time. Like, and as she keeps growing, I mean, uh, uh, she she's like in the room, right? So I want to be able to introduce her. Say, yo. Brittany, she does an amazing job in her craft. I want to be able to connect her with people because I can trust that she's going to do good work. Mm -hmm. right? I want to be a part of that, right? So, But you can't, you're not going to be a part of, no one's going to want to be a part of something that's nothing. That's not moving, has that's no not momentum. moving. You made your first sale online and I saw it and it warmed my heart. Oh yeah, you did. Yo, he did a whole five minutes on you. I just yes. had my first online sale. I saw it that post. It's not in the city. I've been servicing my clients, but my first online sale, you start talking about the troubles and the issues you had with shipping out the order. And I'm like, that's dope. However, the clock starts now. If this is your first online order, you know what people are wondering now, right? Where's the next one? All right, listen, every single week, every episode, you hear me talking about the morningmeetup.com. It's the community. Let me show you what's happening here. Every single morning, Monday through Friday, there's 400 plus people on a Zoom call, right? We're learning, we're talking, we're growing together, and this is you. There's all these people here. It's all these people in the morning meetup. Hundreds of people reading books, growing. We get together quarterly. It's amazing. And for some reason, you just keep looking at, just go to themorningmeetup.com and get in the circle. And then you'll be like way happier. Just themorningmeetup.com. Let's get back to the episode. So you can't be excited two months from now and say, yo, I got my second. <laughs> right. Nobody wants to be a part of that. Momentum. But if I see the one and you're like, yo, I got my, I got my second one today. Yo, I got a third one. Today is, listen, this whole week, we're going to get an online order every single day. And then you start rocking. And you're like, yo, we're going to get 10 a week. Y'all remember last week, I did my first one. It took me X amount of time to do my first one. This time, we're doing 10 a week. And we start seeing the progress. You know what I'm going to do, me personally, and I'm sure Donnie would agree, hey, it's only about that beard oil. Because I see something happening. Mm -hmm. But you got to make something happen first. You definitely have to make something happen. The moment you got that first order, should have been like, how did how'd this happen? How did I get this first order? Let me think about this process. Let me see if I can go and get another one right away. Yep. So now you got to create goals with your orders like David was saying. But you have to, one of the biggest things that entrepreneurs fail to do is maximize on the momentum that they have in real time. Mm -hmm. You stay so focused for so long, for too long on the one great thing that happened that you have this false sense of great things continuing to happen. You got to go right away. Yeah. As soon as you, I would have been on, like, first of all, you need to do a shorter version of I got my first video, my first sale, because nobody's going to watch five minutes of you talking about, you I know. Did. You were so excited. We're going to watch it because we know the story. We had yeah. the beard oil. We're sitting here and we're spraying it on like in real time, right? But I'm talking about your customer, your customer isn't really watching this journey. Tell me really quick. Y'all, we're in business now. I got my first sale. It's going up. You want to make your purchase? Go to such and such and such and such's website. And now you got to keep doing whatever happened to get that one sale can happen to get 10 sales, can happen to get 100 sales. You just have to now maximize the momentum. And I wanted to tell you, you did an amazing job on my best friend, Breeze. Uh, real estate sign, the sold by right. Bree sign. Uh, that's what's up. Yes, I referred her to you. I referred her to you so long ago, and it kind of finally came around. So I don't know if you even re it remembered that I, I sent you that referral. But yes, that was an amazing job on that sign. And so you now need to be right away, right away. Like when this clip drops, when this episode drops, you find this clip where I just talked about this. And yo, they're, we do such good work. They're talking about us on the Social Proof Podcast. Yeah. Have you ordered your sign? Yeah. Yep, yep. And I, the one thing I did notice, and I didn't want to like steal your thunder because you were so excited about this first sale. Um, even in that three, five minutes, however, however long it was, there was no mention of the next one. There was no mention of the next sale. 
Or even the name of the product for real. Yeah. Like why can't we be ex- We're excited in the moment of the win, but we really need to be excited about the next win. We need to have our audience excited. Who's going to be the second though? Who's going to be the second person? Who was the first person to buy a Nintendo? But who was the second? There's somebody who can say, yo, I was the second person buying a Nintendo. I was the first person to, I don't know, I don't know, first person to buy a pair of Nikes. Who was that? But the second one gets just, what about that first hundred people that bought the first pair of Nikes? Those Nikes are worth something. And people are excited to be the 1,000th customer. Mm -hmm. They're they're competitions. We're going to reward our 1,000th customer. Reward your 10th. Reward your third. Hey, guys, I got my first sale. I would get get people involved. Like what people do like to do is support movement, like David was saying. So I'm online, got the first sale. I've been selling out of the trunk, out of the shop for so long. I got my first online sale. Y'all, when do you think I'm going to get my first sale? Monday, Friday. Put a poll on your stories. Okay, who do you think is going to be my first sale? A woman buying for her man or a man buying for himself? Poll it out. Next one, will it be you? You ready? Drop the link. Yeah. Take people through that. I got a, I got a, a, a free, a, a bonus bottle for my fifth sale or my 10th sale, whatever those numbers look like for you, right? And have people engaged in masterminding. Yeah. And you got to believe that. I, I, I truly believe, like, first off, like, people that are on the podcast and first couple of people I always highlight saying, yo, you are a part of history. But think about when Jay-Z was selling tapes, Right out of his car, or Master P was selling tapes out of his car. Someone who has one of those originals, it's valuable. Meaning, so, yo, you could auction that joint off, and someone would buy one of the tapes that I bought from Master P a couple of decades ago. I still have my. Do you look originals. at your oil like that? Like, yo, in, in painting a picture for people. Like, yo, who's going to be one of the first? I'm talking, yo, this is, I don't know what the biggest brand is in your space. You know what I mean? Like, if you would imagine if Rihanna started with just her makeup and she's hand-to-hand before she's Rihanna, right? But now look where she is. What about the people that first bought? It's an NFT. It's a collector's item. It's a collector's item. You feel me? Like, these are, yo, even in your size, this is art. If Picasso did a sign like that when he was alive, what would it be worth today? Mm-hmm. But what if we start painting that picture now? You listen, th- this these are going to be collected items because this is what I'm going to be. Right? If Barack Obama was doing signs, I don't know if he was doing signs in college, but if he did, what is that sign worth? Because he eventually became something where the work that I'm doing now is more valuable. I like when people come up to me and say, yo, I bought a, a Kia, a shirt from you from the Kia's. I remember, I remember when you was working at the Cheesecake Factory and you sold me a wrist. I remember that. And they they hold that thing tight, like, oh, you became something. But now let's just paint the picture now mm-hmm. of what it's going to look like in 10 years. Y'all better come to one of my workshops now. They better come to, they better join a mastermind now. Mm-hmm. Because today is going to be the entrepreneur's workshop. Mm-hmm. In five years, it's going to be Black Equity Con, mm-hmm. right? And then today is Black Equity Con. In five years, we're going to be selling out Madison Square Garden. Yep. Who do we who did we talk to yesterday? Well, you talked to them. Um, I talked to the COO of uh, I talked to Robert Smith's COO billionaire Robert Smith is the richest black person in America and um, was connected through our friend Andre Norman shout out to Andre Norman Uh, he was in DC and um, I know Keith's first name we're on a first name basis too (laughs) uh, shout out to Keith Schultz COO for Robert Smith but Andre sends me a text and I'm sitting on the sofa and my phone's on do not disturb. He's trying to call. I'm not answering. And I see my whole phone light up because the text message, right? And he's the message says, call me important, urgent. And I looked at it and I'm like, it's Dre. I know what his level of important, urgent is. It could really wait like an hour. I'm in the middle of watching a show. I'm watching like uh, one of the Tyler Perry shows. I'll call him in a minute. I knew that 
if I called him in a minute, if I said that, that would mean tomorrow. Let me just see what he what he needs right mm-hmm. now. I get on the phone with Dre and he's like, hey, I'm in the office with Kevin Schultz. He's COO to Robert Smith. We're sitting here and we're talking about um, are gonna, initiatives. Are you going to talk about the situation that y'all talked about? No, no not no, for real. We're talking about initiatives and we felt like this is something, you know, that maybe you and Dave could be a part of. And I'm like, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So we end up having this conversation and I call Dave, I'm texting him like, yo, guess who I just talked to? Guess who I just talked to? And I, I called a couple of people and was like, guess who I just talked to? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you wanted me to mention that story. Oh, yeah, for sure. My, my question is, Robert Smith, billionaire, right? Let's think of if he had a mastermind 30 years ago mm-hmm. before he was a billionaire. And let's say it was $1,000 a year. Would you join it? Why? Like, why would why would you join that? 30 years ago. Because he be, he became something, meaning he had some information 30 years ago that, that contributed to him being a billionaire today, right? And me actually talking about this literally makes me think, like, I need to start painting the picture now. Like, you want to be a part of something. I got some information now. It hasn't manifested into a billion yet, but it will. It will. You might as well join the morning meetup now. You will say, I remember when he was on a call every day for $79 a month. I got some information that's like, yo, the people, the things I had three years ago is why we're here today. And the people that listen, like there's some people that were on those calls early on, and I can clearly see that their business is growing. Mm-hmm. Right? So, I mean, we, we have to like see ourselves in the future seeing how valuable we are now and we can translate that to our customers. Yeah. Thought that was cool. We didn't really get, you had a, a fun filled week. I mean, like kind of pivoting. You had a lot going on. You learned a lot this week. Mm-hmm. I know I learned a lot this week. For sure. You want to share? Did you learn some things this week? Yes. Mm. So, well, last week I went to Genius Network and I'm talking to uh, Cameron Harold. Cameron, he wrote a bunch of books, a uh, really, really successful entrepreneur. And, um, Dre, actually, Dre introduced me. I met him before at the Genius office. Dre is the plug. Yeah, Dre's the plug, for sure. Um, I met him before, but, you know, just he's a high level, and he does programs for COOs, mm-hmm. like the, the two-man. Like, he has masterminds for the two-man. The person is not the number one, mm-hmm. but the person behind. But he says, mm-hmm. you know, he has some stuff for, you know, CEOs, too. And I was kind of sharing with him some of the issues with kind of hiring and staff and leading and stuff like that. And he said, how many people do you have? I said, we got about 13 people on staff. And he said, you have issues with those people. Like, not with the people, but the team and how it's working. I said, yeah, and I'm just pouring out my heart. And he said something extremely disrespectful. Well, not even, it wasn't disrespectful. It was the way he said it was bothering me. He said, "Uh, who hired those people? You? (laughs) I said, yeah. But the way he said it was like, of course, you hired a mother. You, you hired I know what the problem is. Look at you. You hired these people. <laughs> his Scum. question was, he, his question was, he said, um, who taught you how to hire people? What are you talking about? He said, who taught you how to hire people? I said, he said, nobody. He said, exactly. This is one of the most important things you can do in business and you're just winging it based on what you think is going to happen. He said, there's a, there's a strategic systematic way of hiring people into your company and you're just hiring people to fill a need. Who taught you how to hire? I said, nobody care. <laughs> nobody said, well, there you go. Imagine open up a bakery and nobody taught you how to cook. You didn't learn how to cook. Like you, my thing is to do the business. It's not even like I've been hiring people for a long time. I just hire, right? So you don't open a business because you've just like, no one taught you how to run a business and you're just like doing your own thing just to make a sale and make money. That's not running a business. So you open this big business, 10,000 square feet business, and nobody taught you how to run it. Bound for failure. Bound to crash. Because you don't know what you're doing. So, um, the, the uh, yeah, that, that was, that was a, a life-changing situation for me. And then I got on the phone with Donnie, and I'm like, all right, Donnie. <laughs> There's mad stuff I don't know how to do when it comes to running a business. And I need to learn these things. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Oftentimes the CEO doesn't want to take the time to sit down and learn 
the yeah. vital pieces of business that they need to learn. They they just want to hire people to do everything. Oh, I'm going to get somebody in place to take care of that. I'm going to get somebody in place to take yeah. care of that. And while that sounds good, I guarantee with that mindset, with you saying, I don't want to learn this stuff. I'm completely out of that. I just want to get somebody in place to do that. It sounds good. And eventually you just want somebody in place. But right now, literally your systems are broken, mm -hmm. right? And I just told you, you don't throw good people at broken systems. So what ends up happening that is a bar and it's been ringing in my head. You don't throw good people at broken systems. And actually I called um, a team member today, um, Cynthia, shout out to Cynthia. She does operations and she's really, really good, really knowledgeable. But I threw her at a broken system mm -hmm. and I was, I actually called her to let her know like, yo, I, you are, you are extremely talented. Um, I just don't know how to use you yet. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm putting some things in place and then I'll know how to like utilize your talent. But right now I'm going to be wasting your time and we're both going to get frustrated because I don't know how to use you. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. So what happens as a CEO is we start, we start building the business and on our level, we're also the talent. So we're fulfilling, we're building the business. We have all the ideas and we just know that we need this done. We need this done. We need this done. We look at a problem. You look at a problem and you're like, this is a mess, a complete disaster. The first thought is let me hire somebody to come in and fix yeah. it. Nobody's going to be able to come in and fix this right away, right? There's just people think they're fixers. I am a fixer, but I have to have something to work with. And in this case, you had no information about any of your systems. You don't know anything. So now what happens is don't say it like that. You don't know anything. You don't you don't know anything. You don't you don't. I just think you could have said it better. Remember? Well, you're far removed from <laughs> <laughs> That was good. That was good. That was good. Major components of your business. Keep that energy going. Yeah. And so what happens is now you have a good person whose job is to come and sort through a pile of mess. My job is to come and Talk sort all through my business a mess. You should, like, fix your words, man. Okay. Well, you're an unorganized system. Unorganized, right? There's a whole lot of lack of organization happening. So before this, you want this good person to come in and start producing results right away when they've now got to go through three years of the mess that's just been piling. You mess one more time. Mm. Say mess one you, more time. You flick. Call my business. <laughs> Call my business a mess one more time. <laughs> nah, the, it, is, it is it is, it is true. no but you know and i'm not saying met like david is getting money right and that's the beautiful that's the thing that happens it's beautiful really but it's almost like a false metric it's like it can't be that bad because i'm making all this money but if we clear through some of this chaos you could be making so much more money yeah. you could be keeping so much more money because the idea right now is just get another person for that. Okay, I need another person for this. I need to, when really we need to clear through the chaos and from a CEO level, get some organization and get a, get a foundation, at least understand the overall structure. You at least have to understand the overall structure, map that out, and then put people in place like one at a time, sometimes two at a time to get things organized piece by piece by piece by piece. Yeah. So if you are moving into a house and um, let's just say you're purchasing this property and it's, it's complete. Well, let's just say you're in your own house and the house has just got become a mess. You're, you're hoarding and it's full of stuff. You got boxes everywhere, food here, clothes here, just things just piling up. If you want to get it done, you're not going to clean a little in the kitchen and clean a little in the bathroom and then go down in the basement. You're going to knock out one project at a time. Let me knock out this kitchen first. Let me knock out the kitchen first because the kitchen has food and the kitchen you know, things that can cause a bigger problem. If I keep the food and it's nasty, then there's mold and then there's rats and then there's other kind of rodents. This can cause a bigger problem. I can chill on the bedroom right now because in the bedroom, it's just clothes. It's just sheets. It's just shoes. Those things aren't going to cause a bigger problem. But if I let that food start to mold, if I let rats start to come in, now we got another issue. So you start with the hottest issue first. We hire for the biggest area that is the heartbeat of the business that you need right now. And that's different for everybody. Some people, like when you're just getting started, revenue is a problem. And I'm like, hire for a revenue generating opportunity. 
Why? Because you want to keep money in so that you can afford to then hire maybe an assistant. Yeah. Operations isn't first. Maybe you need an assistant taking care of some things. And these roles are really keeping the money flowing in and keeping you organized in a way for you to continue to make the money. Then we maybe start to look at some operations. But if I go operations first and operations is busy clearing through all of the chaos, I'm looking at the operations person like, where's the new stuff? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to bring new groceries into a moldy refrigerator. I got to clean that out first. And now you're looking at that person like it's not working when really you didn't hire in sequential order. We're not addressing the, the targeted hotspot problems. Everything is so messy. She or he has to clear through this first before it even looks like I'm producing a result. Listen, if I was going to teach you how to make a million dollars, would you give me 10,000? Like if I had a course teach you how to make a million dollars and you're positive, you're going to make a million dollars. Would you give me 10,000? Of course you would. It's no brainer, right? So in a calendar year, we make seven figures with the podcast, but there's 21 things that I extracted from that, that you're going to need to launch a podcast, but I only got time to give you three right now. One is you need a distribution platform. The distribution platform is what you upload your podcast to. That platform sends it to Spotify, Apple, Google Play, so that your supporters can actually listen to your podcast. You're also going to need a microphone. You need a really good microphone so it's crispy audio. And three, you need an income strategy. This is not necessarily a hobby, unless you're going to make it a hobby, but I can teach you how I made the seven figures with these 21 things. Now, the good news is you don't have to give me 10,000. My ebook is only 37 bucks, okay? So listen, go to podcastebook.com and get the 21 things that you need. And I, I can explain it in detail, all the things that you need, okay? Podcastebook.com. Let's get to the episode. 100%. First off, my business is not a moldy refrigerator. First off. <laughs> no, but here's, here's what I realized about myself too, that I have a certain level, I'm on a certain level of CEO. So mm -hmm. I, have, I have two, really two compartments in my business right it's the podcast and mm -hmm. kind of like david shan's llc which is like coaching consulting more to meet up stuff like that the podcast runs almost flawlessly but like we have a system we got the sops in place we've we've managed some transitions like uh like people transitions and it worked out well and we still got more systems. Obviously there's always something in a business that can uh, be fixed. And me and, me and Reese was talking about it, but we're like 98% just running. Like we got it down pat. So, but I can run that one. I'm super passionate about the, the space that we're in. And two, I just understand podcasting and I know how to deliver it. I know how it's going to look. And the people that I have are specifically, I gave them a job to do specifically for the podcast because I know what holes need to be filled. Mm -hmm. The other side, however, one, I'm not necessarily, um, I'm not at a level of managing multiple projects. So the podcast is just one podcast. We understand what needs to be produced for this thing. But the other side of my business is events. It's managing the community. It's consulting. It's all these different things. And I've not grown to a level to, to effectively manage a business that has multiple components and multiple people that do different things. So I see a fire with podcasting. It's like, oh, we need somebody to edit the audio. Oh, put a person there. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, <clears throat> running multiple businesses and things of that nature is not as easy. So I'm taking a philosophy from this business that I understand to something else where you can't just, oh, there's a problem. Plug that person in because that person solving that problem, it, either I'd pay too much for them to solve that one problem, but if I'm paying a certain amount of money, I want them to do that and some other stuff. And sometimes it crosses over with other people. In this business with the podcast, it's silos. I get this thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm understanding that it's not, it's not like I'm just a terrible businessman as Donnie would like to paint it. For no but, reason. No, 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 not like that. But, no. but, but she, she understands that like, I need help. Not in this part, it's not only, it's the systems and then plugging people into the systems, but I don't think about it as detailed as understanding a more simplistic business, which is podcasting. Yeah. So that's why I brought Donnie to come in and And it's the management of those things. On. It's it's not just even when you once you get them in place, you have to have a structure for how you manage for sure. and monitor these things. Mm -hmm. And 
a lot of times as a CEO, we fall into these kind of pitfalls in our business because the things that that are so important to your business that you have to make sure the right people are in the right seats. You have no interest in, you have very little understanding about systems and right. operations. You're not interested in learning about those things. You just want to do what you do. That's, that's what it is. Sure. And so you're not, you are super passionate about the podcast, right? So we're going to, we're not ever really going to have like a major issue happening because you're really, really invested in figuring this out. Whereas systems and tech and I don't want to yeah. have any part of that stuff. I do it and I don't want to have any part of that stuff. With the podcast, I don't need something to trigger an email going to a response (laughs) with, you know what I mean? Because in this business, we're not, I'm not selling people. It's not like I buy, you get a receipt, Mm -hmm. email campaign, follow up, sell something else. Well, and see, here's the thing. That's just because that's the model that we're in right now. Correct. Truth be told, we do need those things. A hundred percent. We do need those things. Like I'm just not at that level of CEO no, just yet. No, we're like winging it for real. Like, you know, there's yeah. some strategy involved, but how people, we're just kind of waiting to see how many people download the podcast each month. There are some operational things that we can have in place sure. that would make it even uh, more beneficial. It, it would make it better. We could send out reminders. You know, there are there are all kinds of things yeah. that could happen. Yep. But I promise you, if I said, David, let's do that, you're completely out of that. You're yeah. going to be like, okay, Donnie, you you do that. <laughs> <laughs> but here's, here's what's cool. <clears throat> now that I'm going through this process on the other side of the business, mm-hmm. I'm approaching it with a different mindset. Yes. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm understanding what needs to be done. Yeah. I'm understanding like, okay, before I hire somebody to do a thing, mm-hmm. There's probably a lot more questions that I have to ask versus can you do it and how mm-hmm. long is it going to take you and what's the quality? Let me let me say this too. Um, one thing that I've seen, good is relative. So when you've hired in the past, you're like, yo, I've hired this 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 person and they're good. <laughs> well, what does good really yeah. mean, right? What does that mean and how does it correlate to what you need? Mm-hmm. You could be good, but does it correlate to what I need? I heard someone say, um, I was at a mastermind a couple of weeks ago and it just kind of was like, wow, that makes so much sense because we'll say, well, I want someone with experience. Um, Well, I've got this person. They've done this for that person, this for this person and this for this person or for this company and this company. This person is an operator and they come from this Fortune 5. Well, that person with all those accolades could be the worst choice for you Because they walked into that Fortune 5 that has been systemized over and over and over and over and over again, a perfected process, and they kind of walked in with a playbook. They walked in and here's the job that we need you to maintain versus entrepreneurs like you and I are at levels that we need somebody to come in. You need an operator who's innovative. They can see like we're used. We have experience working with startups just like you in this phase of phase of your business. I am an operator who understands that things are chaotic in the background. My special sauce is is to help to create some structure in this chaos. Yeah. Right. So that level of operations that they put in place is not going to be the level of operations that maybe that gentleman that you were talking to has in place because you're here and he's here yeah. or you're here and he's here, whatever that looks like. So you got to ask questions like, have you worked with a startup? 100%. <clears throat> have you worked yep. in an environment where there are no systems in place just yet? Have you worked in an environment where you reported directly to the CEO? These are the questions at your phase of business that you need to be asking. Yep. It's growth. As long as you're like willing to grow, you'll keep growing. Like I'm sure there's conversation. All three of you are talking about thinking of some areas that you really, really need to grow in. Right. Maybe you're just good at doing the thing, Mm -hmm. but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, one of the things that I'm, I'm practicing now is sitting down for a period of time to, to accomplish a goal yeah very rarely do i do that yeah very rarely do i say okay i have to go through these emails and reply to each one of them i have to go through all of this copy so uh, marcus sent me uh, i think it's like eight pages of copy have i gone through them no i'm i gotta practice sitting down and actually executing a task 
that's going to require because if not, it just lingers on and it holds it hold it, it really prevents us from uh, moving forward because I'm just doing stuff. So well, sitting down the most important stuff. Yeah, I think I think you and I are both major procrastinators. Uh huh. Major procrastinators. It mm. is. It is a thing. Right. It's so bad for me that I try to pray my way out of it. God, if you'll just move, the, remove the spirit of procrastination, <laughs> like please remove the spirit of procrastination and, and replace it with motivation. Like people think I am motivated for the things that I want to be motivated about, but I want to be motivated to do what I said I'm going to do. Yeah. Period. Whether it's a task that I like or don't like, I committed to it. Like it's an integrity thing at that point. Yeah. Get the work done. Get this, but major procrastinator yep. and it's something that i have been working on my whole life and even you know people will look at us and say wow you've you've accomplished this thing i want your work ethic yeah you want to work ethic slightly better than mine <laughs> <laughs> or slightly different than mine you know it might not be a better or a worse thing it just might be different yeah. if i were to give you advice about some things that you could do different for me it would be to execute immediately less time from idea less time for from being assigned the responsibility to actually executing on it i tend to mask productivity in the areas that i enjoy you mask productivity mm -hmm. and the areas that you enjoy. I have a major to-do list of things that have been rolling over for weeks that need to be done. Mm -hmm. And I have not given them any attention, but the things that I actually like to do, I'm working in those things every single day. So I still feel productive, yeah. but I really need to shit. Like this 100%. doesn't really need my attention today. Mm -hmm. I need to get on this task list that keeps rolling over from week to week to week before I am in, a serious most CEOs are the bottleneck of their business 100%. when you trace back where the era occurred where it's happening what the holdup is it's you yep. it's me all the time every single time right like I don't love doing team meetings I just don't yeah. they're necessary it's one thing they're just necessary you have to know what's going on in your business there's going to be a couple of heartbeats in your business. Sales and new leads are going to be one of them. Team and productivity internally is going to be two of the others. You have to be on top of what's happening in sales. You have to be on top of what's happening in your business with your team and their level of productivity. Otherwise, you don't know how strong the heartbeat of your business is. So there are meetings that are actually required. And depending on the size of your organization, some meetings you will not be involved in yeah. some metrics you will never, ever see. Like, I don't want to see how many times a metric that needs to be monitored is how many times did you post on social media? If social media is a growth component of your business, that's a metric that needs to be monitored. I don't want to see that metric. Yeah. Whoever is responsible for seeing that metric and overseeing that you see that what comes to me is the percentage of conversions that we've had from social media. That's the only number I want to see. Now, if the percentage of conversions are at that, at that marker where we say, well, we're at least converting at 30%, then I never even know this metric. I don't know. Yeah. If the percentage of metric goes below that, then we start figuring out, okay, what's going on? Now I need to, let's talk. Who's over, it? Who's over this? Where are these metrics? Let's find out what this is. Now we've uncovered a problem. The, pro the issue is, though, depending on how big your team is, you might see all those metrics right now, right? Mm -hmm. My team is small. I have four people who work for me. It's intentional. I like it that way. So I am involved in a whole lot more metrics than I desire to be. I'm also involved in those metrics because of the service that I actually provide to my clients. I need to have full understanding of what those metrics are and how to get to them. Whereas David doesn't work in an operator space, right? Right. That's why our partnership works so well. I'm a great operator. He doesn't need to see this metric. Now, let's just pretend I worked for David. And let's say I was his COO. You are looking at total money generated from social media. Let's say you worked for me and you posted on the social media account. You have metrics in place where you're supposed to post, blah, 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 blah. It's your job to fill out this report that says I posted seven times this week, right? 
it's my job to look at that report and make sure you are in alignment with what your what what your job requires. OK, she posted seven times. It's supposed to be 10. Let me get there. David doesn't need to know that you posted seven times and it was supposed to be 10. Right. Once it gets to him, there's a problem with me. Once it gets to me, there's a problem with you. Right. So there's chain of command and you got enough people on your team as to where some of the things can be. First of all, you have too many people on your team. Mm -hmm. OK, you guys, I'm involved now. So just, <laughs> <laughs> there's too many people on your team. It just doesn't make sense. Um, but some of this stress work and some of this hard work we can filter through by having the right measurables being measured and the right people monitoring them. And all these meetings, like you don't, there's for no reason do you need to be in a meeting with your whole team every single day because some of these conversations are thought processes and workflows that you don't need to be involved in because you are all, you're going to hold them back. They but can I, but they, ideally the only I think the in the situation that we're in now, if we're having a meeting, I've got to be there because right now I am the person that's putting the systems in place, not in terms of technical systems, but like how to, how to accomplish something. I'm really good at that. Mm -hmm. Like we'll be on a call. I'm saying, OK, well, I and, and I can I can always see an issue mm -hmm. that sometimes a lot of times. They can't figure out or they don't see it. And mm -hmm. just through like curiosity or I'm going to ask some questions, I'm going to find out the problem and will tell me, okay, this is, this is all the stuff that we're doing. And I can see that all the stuff that they're doing mm -hmm. is not going to get us to the goal. And I can, I can look at that and say, okay, you do this, you do that, you do this. Now that works to get the thing done. Right. It, it's not necessarily scalable, but mm -hmm. for right now, until I can, uh, find someone who who understands that and can see that i have to be on the call i can't just have like if they're not on a if they're on a call together they'll just be talking about things that i don't believe that are going to be important to the meeting I understand. that's why that's why uh so reese is asking even more questions like all right well can we do this? I'm like, yes, absolutely. Let's do it. He said, mm -hmm. I think this is what we need to do. And we can have mm -hmm. a conversation on how that plan is, uh, uh, how we can make that plan that he came up with mm -hmm. more efficient. Mm -hmm. And now he's like, okay, I'm going to oversee that part. Right. And it's us kind of just walking <clears throat> into it. But so, I think different people's systems or models are, are going to be based on a particular situation. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But a couple of things right away when I hear you say that, um, there are a few things. One, clear lack of training, right? For sure. So clear lack of training, and then there's a bit of nobody's going to think through this the way that I'm going to think through this mm -hmm. that's involved. And you got to grasp that nobody will ever think through. Like, this is your vision. You see all the moving parts. But unless you want to be stressed out, you have to get qualified people in place trained to do a good enough job but that right? is not an easy thing to do i understand that it's not an easy thing to do but where you are right now in the number of people everybody's business is going to run differently you can be involved in everything if you want to be but mm -hmm. to relieve some of this stress you should be able to talk to your operations person and say hey this is where we're going this is the direction these are the things that i need you to handle that person goes to the other leaders of their departments and say, in order to execute this next vision that Dave has put out here, this is what we need. Your major job is to be communicating with that operator every single day. Right. If well, Reese Donnie, is saying. Donnie, in a perfect world, that's absolutely. Well, no, I know but that that's. Gotta find, yeah, you got to find you gotta it. You got to find the person. But even to find the person who's going to do that, there's a lot of background work that I have to do with being clear on. For sure. And that's and the then part. Understanding how to find that person. Because, of course, that, like what you're saying, 100%, that's absolutely how it should go. I get it. But, I get what you're saying. But the thing is, we have had this conversation for two years at this point. Like, mm -hmm. you've been making adjustments to the team for two. Well, Dave, first things first, you got to get super clear. First. Dave, first things first, we got to mm -hmm. identify and map out. I've been saying this to you for two years. Right. And well, then you go here's what happened. Here's what happened. <laughs> and hire an agency. And yeah, I got it. I got it. And you, know, you ain't got it. An agency? For you hired an operations agency. For what? No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. For what? The package deal. 
Package deal. What are we talking about? Oh, um, don't call their names. No, 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 I wouldn't. But, um, but no, I was, I was super clear on that. And we had those conversations. It's, but I didn't, I didn't know how to, uh, one, one of the person, they said, yo, they were going through some things and they just couldn't execute. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, man, it wasn't bad. Here's the thing. I don't, I don't care who you are. It's possible that you can one either hire the wrong person mm -hmm. or um like I'm I'm super patient with understanding that we can grow. We can have a super dope mastermind. You vet out the person, you hire them, put them in a system because you're good at that stuff, and it could be the wrong person. For sure. You will right, hire more bad people than you will good for people. For sure. I'm but the everybody that I hire and doesn't work out for me. I'm excited because now I get a refresh taking some, it's like going through bad relationships. Eventually, okay, we got out of that bad relationship. Now I know a couple of the things that I should be looking for or that I don't want. And then we'll move forward. And But I, I can say that I am a much better CEO now that I was mm -hmm. last year because like I just leaned into the podcast and now I don't have to like micromanage everybody. Like everybody knows what they do. Now it's got to be able to translate that because it's an easier, mm -hmm. it's an easier thing to run mm -hmm. than all of the other systems right now. I can build on top. Of, now we got a really solid foundation. If you wanted to, um, let's say we were going to put some sort of funnel in place mm -hmm. for the podcast. The foundation is laid. Now I tell one person, put this ad in in this podcast and use it put the link in there now i have to figure out how to manage the flow and all that kind of stuff but we laid a good foundation to be able to put a funnel on top of the podcast yeah. it's just the other stuff that you gotta you gotta grow through you and the thing through. is it's like it's not necessarily that you or anybody who's experiencing this is doing something wrong For you're sure. not doing anything wrong the thing is you just don't know what you don't know absolutely you don't know what you don't know Yep. And this is new for all of us. Like, mm -hmm. we're not reading an entrepreneurship manual that says, let's go to tab this. Uh, maybe I need to create something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Stop, uh, <laughs> stop, entrepreneur, stop entrepreneuring. Okay. I'm we entrepreneurial. Do this every <laughs> but, but we're not reading a manual that has a reference point mm -hmm. of what exactly that step is. And even when somebody gives you the step, there's always variations to the step. And you're not going to, your business and your back end won't operate the same way as somebody else's business and their back end. And they could be in the same exact business model as you. You still have to do what feels good to you as a CEO. But one of the things that will be helpful in identifying what those things are is you like, when's the last time you did a life mapping exercise where you just mapped out your life, how you want to live your life, what that looks like to your family, what that looks like to your business, what that looks like for yourself, like the time that you're putting into your family, the time you're putting into your business, the time that you're putting into your friends, the times that you put the, the time that you're putting into you and what that looks like. Like, have you ever sat down and literally drawn that out? Like, I want to walk into an office every day and I have team. I just realized recently not even just recently, I've come to the conclude like I'm I'm intent I'm I'm being intentional now. Uh the pandemic put us in a place where we had to work from home, right? Before that, we had offices. Um I worked primarily from home, but I did have an office. But I still work primarily from home. I had an option to go into the office and kind of do some work, right? Well, the pandemic made it so that there is no option. So we're working from home and we're glorifying this lifestyle like, man, it's so dope. I get to work from home and da, 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 da. If I'm being totally honest, if I work home every day, I'm taking like two, three, four naps. If I am home every <laughs> single day now, at first it's exciting and you're productive and you've set up your workspace and this is fantastic. But now, like, it's only so many times I'm going to be able, it's so many, it's only going to be so many hours in the day that I'm going to be able to be intentional and at my computer and working before I start dozing off. Naps and hit. those naps hit different. And your lunch choices hit different when you're at home, too, because you're eating leftover dinner from last night. That's a little too heavy. You got all these snack options. And you'll look at the end of the day and you're like, man, I took like six 15-minute naps. Mm -hmm. That happens. Don't have so, that TV on, that Netflix. Don't have it on. <laughs> then... You start, you know, then I just know the type of 
person that I am and what motivates me, I've gotten to where I've gotten because of the environment around me. And so my day to day environment, I have to believe that if you had to work and do this and podcast from home every single day, it would feel very different than walking into this environment every single day with people coming by. I realize I need that. So now I want to be more intentional about going back into the office space where I walk in and I have a sales team that's in the office. I need to feel that energy. I need to see that. I need to walk in and be like, what's going on, Bree? Everything great? What we what we got? How many we got on the board today? I need to see the leaderboards. I want to walk in and peek into my operator's office and say, what, what we got? Any major fires? Anything? Any Like that kind of energy drives me. It's very different than a phone call, right? It's very, very different than a phone call. My counterpart, my peers may say, Oh, no, for me, from home, I want all VAs who work in all different parts of the world. It, that doesn't work for me. I don't I don't choose to work with VAs in high level performing roles of my company, whereas it may work very well, extremely well for somebody else. That VA process works for an entrepreneur or a CEO who that works for. But for me, I'm an empath and I need to feel and be around the energy that doesn't work for me. So. You just have to identify, like actually map out your life, what feels good to you, the things that bring you joy, how you want to show up in work, how you want to show up in your personal life. And then ask yourself, like, am I building in alignment with this? Yeah. Am I building in alignment with that? I've been building a home based business and hiring people all over the country when really for me, that's settling. We're doing well, but that's settling. I want my office. And I want my team showing up for work every single day or at least a couple of days out of the week. I don't know that I desire to go back to a full Monday through Friday plan either, but I want a couple of days throughout the week where we're in this office and we're at the boardroom, not on the Zoom. Like I want to feel the energy of the people who are helping me build this project. Yep, 100%. Uh, this is the stuff entrepreneurs don't want to talk about. How do y'all feel? feel? You feel good? Overwhelmed? A lot of work to do. Good. I'm glad you feel that way uh, because that's going to push us. And listen, I listen. So we're going to go to lunch and we're going to we have we have to have this meeting. First off, we need an agenda because if not, we're going to talk about fatherhood and so friendship and all kind of stuff. Our agenda is essentially the same. We do need have, to hit. Do you have it written down. Our agenda is the same Write as. First of all, when? Right okay. now. I don't, I don't. Okay, let's, let's do it. You want to map agenda. it out? Yeah. Let's got, do an agenda. Let's okay. Wrap up. Actually, there's a guy that's uh, fixing my tire right now. Hold on. Let's map so, it out. Yo, can we get, um, grab Kashif real quick. Because there's a guy outside. Hello? Are you here? This is so right, unprofessional. Cool. Come into the front door. When I map out how I like to do oh. business, taking a personal call. This isn't a personal call. This guy's going to fix my tire. That is a personal problem. Does the tire need to be fixed in order for us to go to lunch? Kinda, unless oh. you're going to drive and bring me back. I'm not. See? I'm not. For no reason. <laughs> okay, let's map out our agenda. So, Do me a favor. Can you go to the guy at the door and just tell him that the car's in the back? He could take my phone and he can get into my phone to the Tesla with that car. It's right at the back door. Thank you so much, man. So our meeting agenda... And this is really, this is really clutch, you guys. We're going to map this out real quick so you guys know what we're about to meet about. But anytime you're having a meeting with your team, with your partners, whoever, always have a meeting agenda so you stay on point. I'm glad so, you're telling them that because we've been hypocritical. We just pull up. <laughs> and we get, yo, we literally get nothing done on, on a regular yeah, basis. Well, but this time, one time, my wife was there. We had an agenda, we though. stayed on top. Well, Probably. and so that has happened because Dave and I will just say, hey, we need to have a meeting. We don't ever really know what we need to meet about. Yeah, there's no, there's, I think there needs there to be rules in place. There wasn't enough movement, you know? Like, we were just meeting. There needs to be rules in place when you do business with your friend. Because, yeah, those are the rules. Okay, we don't got to do it right now. Let's, let's just wrap up. So we can... Well, wait, we gotta, let's I get the meeting agenda topic. because... I want to stay on, on time today. This is... We're, we're on time. No, we're not. Yes, Look, we're about. Five oh my god! Gone. I thought that was a five. Okay, meeting agenda. We need to talk about um, the, nonprofit. the nonprofit, and we also are we talking network today? My organizational chart. We're, yep. 
the network. David's David's business organizational the chart network in the pocket in the uh, mastermind. David's org chart. We're talking about the mastermind too. Yes. Okay. Just so, those. Whoa, well, wait. We got the nonprofit. We got mad stuff. But let's the just org chart, those. the mastermind, and there was something else. That was four. I got three. Nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Organizational chart. Mm -hmm. The network. The network. And the mastermind. That's what I'm missing. Let's discuss it. We got these four things. Now, ideally, this is not an agenda. We would then break this down, and we don't have time to do it today, but we will break down three bullet points that we want to discuss so that we're not having an, a, a meeting that's just going on forever and ever. So what are the three hot things that we need to discuss with each thing? We kind of know because we just had a meeting a couple of days ago, but whoop, there that is. Yep. Cool. All right. Hey, can y'all do us a favor? Can you like, subscribe, follow on your podcast app and share this with somebody? Do me a favor. Make a video right now of a recap of what you learned or one point that you learned. Make it on Instagram. Say, I learned this on the Social Proof Podcast. Tag me or Donnie. We'll reshare it in our uh, in our stories. Um, this is really, really valuable information that everyone needs to have. At least having the conversation so that we can start to progressively get better. What's your, take the mic real quick. What is, what are you going to do now? What do you got to do after this conversation? Get it together, Reese. Oh, just the camera? Just the, all right, cool. Go for it because we don't want any dead space. Okay. I'm going to figure out what my hot spot is, what that, what my kitchen is in my business. Mm. First and expound give me more um so basically right now i'm in this stage of trying to organize all the areas of my business mm -hmm. and there's so many different areas mm -hmm. and so i need to figure out what area need what area is top priority yeah. that's good that's good mateo um one i want to be able to help you guys with technology and operations because i thought that that was very interesting all the things you're saying you know my wife and me that's what we focus on helping seven eight figure entrepreneurs on the back end and um just thinking about the fact of like looking at like she said that you know the kitchen because yeah. we always looking at like the other areas the bedroom that may not need as much attention mm -hmm. and we're not paying attention to the area we need to be so i think that that's going to be my homework as well is like my goal is really to be able to help as quick as possible right. and sometimes it takes some time like to be able to accomplish that if you're still focusing on trying to like how am i going to get the best result you know what i'm saying yeah. so me focusing on what i could do internally to get my, the best result for my team allows me to get the best result for my clients as well yeah good yeah. stuff good stuff yeah well, let's wrap this thing up let's wrap we're good to thing go up, man make sure y'all like subscribe and share this with somebody okay how can people get in touch with you, Don, if there's their first episode? If this is your very first time watching the Social Proof Podcast, where have you been? <laughs> um, however, you can find me at Donnie Wiggins underscore on Instagram. Also, I have an amazing program where we develop entrepreneurs from scratch that are interested in becoming coaches, consultants, and course creators. Check out sixfigureedu.com. That's the word six, S-I-X, figureedu.com. And for any entrepreneur who's already established in their business, but you're struggling to present yourself on social media and converting your social media followers into sales, I have an offer for you. I have a program where we send you three text messages every single day directly to your phone of exactly what you should be posting on your social, things that you should be talking about, what kind of reels you should be posting. And I give you the caption, like you just plug and play your business and all of those things that are related to it. It's called Post to Pay. And you can text me at 404-737-2767. Text the words Post to Pay to 404-737-2767. 2767 and right now it's just $37 a month. I love it. Also, this uh, episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Before I talk about that, if you want to start a podcast, I have a course where it's $2000 where you will you will learn how to start, grow and heavily monetize the podcast. So, you can go to um I think it's podcastersblueprint.com uh, and get the course. However, however, I think it would be more beneficial if you go to themorningmeetup.com 
It's seventy nine dollars a month to be a part of our community where we learn to grow together. I'm giving information on a regular basis. We have a a uh, we have a book club. I bring on special guests. A lot of people that you see on the podcast they come in every single morning. We want to help you with your morning routine. Okay, you really want to get to the next level as an entrepreneur. You got to be in the environment. What I did was I took that two thousand dollar podcast course and made it available in the morning meetup for free. So essentially, you can actually for the same cost of just the course alone you can join the morning meetup and be in there for like two years so i mean the choice is up to you also we have a content creation course in there where i'm teaching you how to create content because you got to build your brand um but these those are just some of the perks of being in the community but you cannot do entrepreneurship alone okay you need a community of people that you can learn with and grow with okay so go to the morning meetup.com or you can go to the app store and download the morning meetup and enroll right now 79 dollars a month or 399 for the whole year okay so um yeah there we have it there we have like, it subscribe we out we out Peace. bye